Okay, so we're going to cover some quick settings and navigation in Rhino. This is the screen as it opens, sort of by default. Um, I am an ex AutoCAD person. I like the uh, command line down at the bottom. That is totally personal preference. You can feel free to do whatever you like. Um, object snaps, which are here. I like to have them at the top. We use these often. Um, and you'll have tabs up here at the top, layers, and properties are two frequently accessed tabs. So I'll drag properties out and drag this down until you see the blue sort of split vertically. And uh, so I have layers and properties in one tab or one pane. Um, that's sort of my ideal setup. Um, your the top and sides or toolbars may be different than than uh, what you see here. Um, this is all customizable. If you are to right click in the gray area of a toolbar and say show toolbar, you'll have a list of everything that's available. Um, I tend to use uh, command line for most of my functions. Uh, it's 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 the fastest way. So. Um, Hopefully you get used to typing commands. Um, a quick item of navigation. Um, you have four viewports here. You can see these are the projection views, standard top, front, right, perspective. Um, I tend to work mostly in the perspective viewport. These <clears throat> are configurable, obviously, so you can set them to anything you'd like. If you double click viewport name, it will expand that viewport. Um, <clears throat> so right clicking, uh, I'm going to turn this on the shaded mode. I have the shaded toolbar on here. Uh, the shade I believe it is. So if I go here, new toolbar, right click down. And someone there is called uh, display. So there's the display toolbar. Uh, if you right click anywhere, that's um, rotate. So this is how you 3D orbit. And if you continue to hold right click and move across the viewport, you see how that jumps to the other side. That's a very nice feature. So you have sort of continued motion. Um, holding shift while you click right click is pan uh, on the viewport and holding control while you right click is zoom. You can also use the mouse button to scroll. Um, you can see here that it's sensitive to where the mouse is so the location of the mouse while zooming um, sort of focuses your your camera approach. So right click, pan, shift right click, or I'm sorry, right click 3D orbit, shift right click, pan, control right click, zoom. And there are some basic things where you want to select something, uh, zoom, space, S, space, zoom selected. So you sort of get used to hitting that quickly. Uh, I believe I actually set up a quick key called ZS, uh, there it is, zoom selected. Now your options are um, customizable, of course. So I have things I've set up. You know, I, I mentioned I hit ZS to zoom selected. That's something I don't believe that was a functionality. PL, for example, just like in AutoCAD, I've set to make a polyline. Uh, that is not a out-of-the-box function. Under Tools, Options, this is where you configure everything about the sort of user experience in Rhino. Um, it's sort of a very deep menu, so I encourage you to explore. Um, aliases are your quick keys. 
So you'll notice that any time in Rhino that you pick a command, so if you use a button, for example, this is the control point curve. If I click that, down in the command line you'll see the, the text command to operate for that operation. You can always I hit escape to get out of there. You can always highlight that, right click copy, and under tools options, aliases, if you find yourself using a function often, uh, aliases, you can say new, and I want for some reason uh, RR to be that curve. I don't, but um, this little apostrophe there, there's a reason for it. Uh, we're not going to get into it now, but include that and then paste the command and say OK. Now if I hit RR and uh, spacebar, then it will start the control point curve. Um, a note on that, spacebar, enter, and right click all have the same function. They all equal enter. So um, that's typically used to start and stop commands. So if I'm in polyline and I click, uh, hitting click to create more points. Right click will end that. Spacebar will end that. Spacebar and right click will also start that up again. Um, so they're sort of synonymous. Spacebar, enter key, and right click are all the same function. Uh, the delete key is delete, as you can see. I believe that is a out-of-the-box functionality, so uh, all the other standard things which you'll find, control Z, undo, um, that's the basic functionality. Now, options, I have a, a set again, as I said, that I've sort of built through the my experiences. Um, they're by no means complete. Uh, they, they change. I keep adding things to it. Um, I export that periodically to sort of lock in where I am. Um, you can import just the quick keys if you'd like. It's a text file. Or you can go to Tools, Options. Oops. So you can export these as a text file. So if you sort of spent time and set up a bunch of buttons that you'd like, um, you can set up and save your aliases and sort of access, email them to yourself and then access them wherever you are. Um, but typically, I just export all of my options, which includes sort of how I position things. Um, I believe some of the toolbars that are shown, although that is a separate toolbar export. But I'm going to say import options. I'm going to locate my file. So I've exported my complete sort of options file, which includes aliases. Uh, and hit OK. And then it's asking what would you like to sort of import. I'm going to say select all and OK, and this will as closely match my settings that I've sort of established throughout uh, my experience with Rhino. I will make those available. You can bring them in and feel free to uh, sort of open, edit, and sort of configure anything, um, anything you'd like. Sort of one last bit of functionality. Uh, of sort of base functionality, the layers. Uh, selecting an object, right clicking a layer and saying change objects layer will set it to that layer. From there, uh, one other thing I believe this check mark, the active layer check mark by default is to the right of the layer name. I like it on the left. Um, again, personal preference. So these layers, you can have sub layers. Uh, so if I were to <clears throat> sort of assign this to this layer. You'll see that they're on separate layers. If I turn this off, they all turn off. And if I individually turn the purple layer off, um, that is <clears throat> um, going to turn that individual layer off, obviously. Um, clicking once to highlight the layer and then clicking again, you can edit the name. Um, and you can right click that layer and select objects on that layer. You'll see that I said select objects. That is, 
uh, going to select the objects specifically on that layer. These are two individual layers. This is the parent layer to layer two. If I were to right click this and say select sublayer objects, it will select the objects on that layer and anything below it. Uh, so you can have multiple sublayers, you can have sub sublayers, um, and if you want to sort of outdent that, you can either move it out of the parent or you can just simply drag sort of out. Um, so layers, obviously, very useful. Locking. So you can't select things. Uh, you can select multiple layers at a time to do operations to. Very uh, sort of useful functionality. Very similar to AutoCAD. Um, and as you sort of continue, play with line types, play with print colors, um, and sort of visual settings, you'll become sort of more and more fond of the layer system.